go do GMM. A lot of the trouble with learning GMM is just learning the notation. So I have a slide for you with the notation, and we'll go back and check where we are on the slide. And that uh, is going to be like a little outline for you of all the different things we're going to do. So the notation here is in red, so we can just map ideas into the GMM notation. First task, express your model, and what your model says about the world, as the mean of some function of the data and some function of unknown parameters is equal to zero. That's what we've done in asset pricing. We've expressed our basic asset pricing equation as zero is expected discounted times returns. And I'm going to use B notation for the vector of unknown parameters. Um, from that, what we've done, we learned how to take unconditional means and to include conditioning information by adding instrument ZT or calling that a managed portfolio RE times ZT. So our model says the mean of some function of data and unknown parameters equals zero. Uh, another a, a, a case to keep in mind, the capital asset pricing model was A minus B times the market return. That was the discount factor times the return. There, the coefficients, the unknown coefficients are A and B. The consumption-based asset pricing model, uh, the consumption-based discount factor times the return was equal to zero. Here, B means beta and gamma, the unknown parameters. Now, in our, in our, in our view of the world, this is a vector. We use lots of different assets, R1, R2, maybe the Fama French 25, stocks, bonds, foreign exchange, and so forth. And we expand it further with managed portfolios R times Z. So the predictions of our model is that there is a vector of means that is zero uh, with two free parameters that can help make some of those means zero. If you want to relate this back to traditional asset pricing, remember E of MR, we've done this uh, before, E of MR is E of M, E of R plus the covariance. We can express that as 1 over Rf, expected returns minus beta times lambda. That is what we called alpha. So when we say E of MR should be equal to 0, it's the same thing as saying the alpha should be equal to 0. All we're really doing at is just looking whether expected returns line up with betas, the alphas being the difference. We, uh, the model says those alphas should all be 0. So step one, express your model as a vector of moments that should all be 0. Now, those are population moments. These are statements about truth. We have a sample. So the GMM philosophy says, how, how do we estimate population moments? We'll just use the sample counterparts. The E sub capital T in GMM notation, that means uh, the uh, sample mean. So what we will look at is the sample mean of M times R in the place of where the theory refers to true or population moments. So we have three tasks now. Our tasks are to estimate, to find the free parameters, to find sample values, b hat or b sub t, are our best guesses. And we're going to pick those to try to make these moments as close to 0 as possible. That's the estimating philosophy. The model says they should be 0. We will set the sample moments to zero, as close to 0 as possible. Second task, standard errors. If you pick estimates that way, what is the standard error of those estimates? Third task, tests. If um, the true is zero, do, are the sample moments that you see after you've done estimation, are those close to zero? Now, they're not going to be equal to zero, but is there deviation from zero just due to luck after we account for the fact that we estimated some parameters to make them uh, equal to zero? So estimation, standard error, testing, that's what statistics is about. OK, now let's put that into the GMM notation. GMM notation is we have a vector of moments corresponding to the assets we're going to look at. That's called G of B. That's the, vet, that's the things that should be 0. We also call them sometimes the, the true mean of F of X beta. That is the function of data and parameters whose mean should be 0. We use the notation U for F of X beta. And in our case, that is M times R. So it's in red. That's just all notation. The sample counterparts is G sub capital T. That means the sample mean of the X, the sample mean of, of M and R. Uh, and that is, of course, a function of what parameters we choose to use. So now let's do a GMM estimate. What do we do? The GMM estimation says choose a linear combination of the mo sample moments and set those to 0. We want to set the moments close to 0 somehow. Why not just take a linear combination of those 
and, and set them to zero and use that in order to estimate our parameters. So here's an example. Suppose we have a model, CAPM, or consumption-based asset pricing model. We're going to use the market return, the risk-free rate, the small minus big, and the HML portfolio. So four moment conditions, four assets, two parameters. How do we choose those parameters to, to make the moments, to give the model its best chance to make the moments close to zero? Choose a linear combination of those four parameters, two linear combinations, and set those to zero. I chose an interesting one. I'm allowed to do anything I want. I chose, why don't we set the market return exactly to zero, the risk-free rate exactly to zero, then we'll reserve these two moments. We can use those to test and see how well, after we've estimated these parameters, how well does the model do on setting those equal to zero. That's an example of, of how a GMM estimate can find the parameters you want, and later, how we're going to do the testing. Now, sometimes uh, you can solve this. Our, our objective is solve that equation for b hat. Sometimes that solution is easy. It's just linear. And in this case, if we're doing the cap m, that's a linear function. So putting that m in, it's just a linear function of these two moments. And you can solve that for a and b analytically. Sometimes the computer has to search. So in the, in the uh, consumption-based asset pricing model, the m is beta consumption of the gamma. We need to choose beta and gamma to make that moment equal to 0 and that moment equal to 1. Well, beta you can do, but gamma you can't because it's nonlinear. So you just program the computer to go search for the gamma that sets that equal to 0 and that equal to 1. Now, that can run into trouble, and this is an important uh, an important uh, uh, case that happens sometimes. Here I've graphed gamma, the parameter we're looking for, versus the moment. This is the GT of gamma that we're trying to minimize. We want that to happen. We want to choose gamma to set that first moment to zero. If it happens that there is no solution, you're in trouble. The model has to work in some sense for this to work. So beware of that. That's the uh, solution we're looking for. If that happens, then you've estimated gamma. Now, this A matrix is free. You're free to choose any two rank two matrix. And that's what's beautiful about GMM. It lets, it's a framework that lets you do all sorts of interesting things. You're used to econometric techniques telling you what to do, being a big black box. That's not the way this is. This is just a, a beautiful palette of, with which you can paint the picture you want to do. That's a very flexible tool. Another comment is, is uh, it's OK also to do exact identification. We don't need over-identification. Two moments, two parameters, that's fine too. You can estimate without being able to test. This is a case where what I did is uh, my, my A matrix here, it implements the idea, let's force the market return and risk-free rate to be priced correctly, and then we'll see how well it does on the other two assets. You can do that. You can do all sorts of things.